Hi everybody and welcome to McNulty's Book Corral. Today we're going to talk about some World War II novels and we're going to start out with the Pulitzer Prize winning A Bell for Adano by John Hersey, published in 1944. John Hersey was born in 1914 and died in 1993. This was the Pulitzer Prize winning novel. Um, really a breakthrough work for him, talking about the relationship between the GIs and the Italian villagers in the town of uh, Adano. And it was also made into a very popular film. Now, I think the film is now considered a classic. And so if you haven't seen the film, I think you can catch it on Turner Classic Movies, Turner Movie Classics, whatever that station is called now. <laughs> and uh, I'll check it out. Really well-written book, obviously. A Pulitzer Prize winning book. John Hersey was a very interesting man. This is the Franklin Library signed edition, by the way, of A Bell for Adano. I don't uh, have a lot of Franklin Library books. I know it's hard to see the signature. Um, I collect them now and again. I'm so fond of the book that I collected the signed edition. As you know, that's not unusual for me to do that. Um, let's jump into uh, Harry Brown's A Walk in the Sun, also published in 1944. Very, very interesting year for um, these works of fiction because the war was still going on. We, they were a year out from from uh, Victory Day there, and Victory in Europe, VE Day. And A Walk in the Sun was came out in 1944, also made into a very popular film, now also considered a classic of motion pictures from the same period as A Bell for Adano. So we have two 1944 classics. Now Harry Brown, 1917, 1986. Harry Brown had a really interesting life. Um, he wrote the screenplays for the following, and I have some notes here. Wake of the Red Witch. Remember my episode on Wake of the Red Witch? He worked on that screenplay. He also worked on the screenplay for uh, Kiss Tomorrow Goodbye, A Place in the Sun, starring Elizabeth Taylor and Montgomery Cliff, which I mentioned in my episode about... Um, Rain Tree County. So we have some connections here. And he also worked on the screenplay for Ocean's Eleven. And he wrote many, many other books. So A Walk in the Sun really... Now this is a combat novel all the way. Um, talking about um, the the effect the war had on the GIs, their efforts to stay alive, and defeat the enemy. Looking at this type of thing today, we can see what's become a cliche. You know, the... the uh, the ethnic diversity in the platoon, all of that. You can see that in numerous films, talking about waiting to get home, getting back to New York, getting back to the women, getting back to the restaurants, whatever. Um, that's kind of become a cliche, but it wasn't a cliche when A Walk in the Sun was published. Uh, really a, a, one of my favorite novels from this period, A Walk in the Sun by the interesting and always fascinating Harry Brown. So be sure to check that out. Now we're going to go into Signal Red by Harold Kalin. Here, another aren't these covers on these um, these combat paperback great from the uh, from the fifties and sixties? And on the back, damn the bastards, they won't give in. Uh, this is this is pure fiction all the way. This is hard boiled combat fiction, men's adventure fiction, post war unlike the first two, which were published during the war. This is post-war fiction. Um, Harold Kalin was a genre novelist, and he wrote he wrote tie-ins um, for television and, and films, including Combat, the TV show. He wrote a novelization. Um, the, young, the Young Racers and Kings of the Sun. I think that was a Yul Brynner film. He did that. And he did a Western called The Indian Killer. Uh, lots of interesting and different things out there. This is a 1964 paperback, by the way. Harold Kalin wrote also many other um, combat novels, some war novels. And really good writer, so I'm recommending if you can find a copy of Signal Red. This is really a good book as well uh, by Harold Kalin. And now we're going to get into... Um, Really a fascinating, a fascinating book by David Forrest. It's called The Last Blue Sea. And this, David Forrest is, an, was an Australian writer, 1924, 1997. And he was a journalist and a historian. Uh, his real name was David Denholm. 
And this is an, also a 1964 paperback. Lots of interesting connections today. Yes, I planned it that way. So, um, The Last Blue Sea was his debut novel. And this is one of the most, I, I would say, perfectly written combat novels I've ever read. Uh, I really think it's, uh, it's well known among paperback, vintage paperback collectors. Uh, they know this book. I know this book. This is a really a nice piece of writing that you'll find here. Um, great Australian uh, historian and journalist, David Forrest, which was a pen name. As I mentioned, David Denholm was his real name. If you can find a copy of this, which I think is easy to do, as always, on eBay, do so. The Last Blue Sea. And it's billed on the cover as a superb novel of fighting men in the savage jungle warfare. Of New Guinea and those of you familiar with World War II history understand that the Australians uh, played a major role in that theater uh, during World War II. Great great historic and tough men these great Australian uh, allied forces here. So The Last Blue Sea beautiful poetic title and a very very well written book highly recommended of all of them, you know, get them all that I'm recommending if you can. They're not expensive on eBay, but I'd start with this. Really great. And then we're going to end it with Moments of Glory by Norman Daniels. And I'll have, again, scans of these so you can look at the covers. Norman Daniels, 1905-1995. Now, here is a guy who created the pulp hero, the Black Bat. And he wrote many, many other pulp fiction tales including The Shadow and, I believe, The Phantom Detective, as well as, obviously, The Black Bat. This is a 1965 paperback. It is fiction. It is a combat novel by a pulp writer, and it's excellent. Um, Norman, da I really like Norman Daniels' his Phantom Detective stories. I have quite a few of those. I don't know how many, but I, I have at least... Two dozen of those in my collection somewhere. A really good writer in the pulps. That's not always the case in some of these um, combat novels that uh, I'm referring to here, or, or these post-war books. Uh, but Norman Daniels was another genre writer, along with Harold Kalin. So those two were genre writers. And um, this is really an excellent book. A little thicker than some of the others. 1965 paperback. From Norman Daniel. So I hope this gives you a taste of some of the great combat novels of World War II and some great post-war lit. Until next time, stay well and read a book. Mm -hmm.